Hello, Katya. My name is Ellen, and I will be correcting this essay for you today. Um, I understand that you've never taken IELTS before, but you're taking the general training test. So let's take a look at your task two and see what you wrote. This is the essay about people becoming, or rather prisoners, ex-prisoners becoming good uh, citizens. Um, let's see what you said. Some people think that convicted persons can become good citizens during their time in jail. For this main reason, they consider they are the most appropriate individuals to give speeches to adolescents about the consequences of committing crime. Some feel it is completely inadequate to do this. However, I agree to those who say that is an eye-opener opportunity for, to teenagers to know everything related to crime and life in prison. In the following paragraphs, I will explore the rationale for both beliefs as well as proffer justification from my own point of view. Okay. Um, on the whole, this is good. You included a lot of the things that you need to include in, an, in a, a well-structured um, introduction. You gave your position, so that's really good. You rephrased the task. What I'd like to see a little different here is a couple of things. I would like to see this be a little more concise. It's rather long for an introduction, and quite honestly, the whole thing is rather long. It looks here like it's 481 words. There is no word maximum. You should know that. But still, you do want to be able to write um, an appropriate amount of words in the 40 minutes that you should uh, spend on the task two. So again, I don't know how long it took you to do this, but I would like to see what you write within 40 minutes, um, assuming that this wasn't 40 minutes. Uh, and that would probably be a better indication of, of what you're writing. Uh, again, I'm making the assumption that it took you longer than 40 minutes, which might be wrong. Um, but since that's all you have, it's a good habit of getting into. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this introduction. We spent a lot of time just kind of, um, talking about general sorts of things. So I want to fix some of the grammar, some of the language here. Some people think that convicted people, you have to be careful here. Well, yeah, I guess it's all right. Convicted people can become good citizens during their time in jail. And for this main reason, they believe these are the most appropriate individuals, not really give speeches, but to uh, speak to adolescents about the consequences of committing crime. Um, and then I didn't really like this next sentence because you have this huge sentence here. It's, it's too long, quite honestly. Um, but then you have this little sentence and it just kind of feels choppy. Um, so I would have liked to see something a little different. Um, you could have, let's see. Um, some people think that convicted persons can, um, Why don't we try this? Some people think that convicted people can become good citizens during their time in jail. Full stop. For this reason, comma, they believe they're the most appropriate individuals uh, to speak to adolescents about the consequences of committing the crime. Uh, however, some feel that it is completely inappropriate. And now here, this isn't clear. It is completely inappropriate to um, use former prisoners this way. Okay? And then, I agree with those who say that it is an eye-opening opportunity for teenagers to know about everything related to crime and life in prison. And then the rest is fine. So you can see that I made a number of changes. Um, again, I would have just made it a little shorter, a little briefer, and uh, then moved on. Let's see what you wrote in your body paragraphs. 
Regarding those who hold that adolescents should not know about the life of convicted persons, they are of the opinion that it is completely unnecessary because they consider, no, because they believe the young population may be motivated to commit crime. One supportive claim is that they might be more intrigued with a D about what crime, no, what type of crime the individual did and know how they did it instead of talking about what implicates, it feels like the wrong word here. How about what motivates them to act against the law, being punished by a judge, and I'm confused about the grammar here. And uh, let me see. They might be more intrigued about what type of crime the individual did and how they and know how they did it. Instead of talking about what motivates them to gack the law, be punished by a judge and live in jail cells for years. Okay, you need this to be a B. A case in point would be, no comma here, when my cousin Jason was in high school, a convicted person talked to his class about the difficult life he had in prison, how it changed him and his perspective of life, but unfortunately, nobody was interested in that topic. His classmates started to, mm, full stop here, new sentence, his classmates, you could have said, uh, instead, his classmates started to ask questions about the crime committed and wanted to know more about criminal minds, even, mm, and some even thought that what he did was impressive. Okay. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that it is important to teach young generations about the consequences of their actions when someone acts against the law. Not only, okay, this isn't a full sentence. This is a fragment, so you have to be careful here. Uh, not only because they spend years in prison and are not able to work, spend a lot of time in their villa. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read this to see what it is you're trying to say. And how we could best fix this. Let's see. Uh, the consequences of their actions with some racket. Blah, blah, blah. This is not only because they spend years in prison and are not able to work, spend a lot of time with their relatives, or even. Wait a second. This is, ah, this is because they spend years in prison and are not able to work, spend a lot of time with their relatives, or even call them when they want to. There we go. Ah, oh, okay, but then you have a but also here. Look, it's a long enough sentence as it is, so I would not have combined these two. If you do that, look what happens. You've got, do you see this? So when you use not only and but also, you have to use them together in one sentence. You can't use them separately like this. Um, but if we combined all of this together in one sentence, it would just be way, way, way too long. And you don't want to do that. That's why I changed this um, a little a little differently so you can make it just one sentence. So this is not only because they spend years in prison and are not able to work, spend a lot of time with their relatives or even call them when they want to. Additionally, This affects, with an A, every aspect of their lives, especially life after prison, because it is complex to be accepted in society again without mentioning how difficult it is, careful here, it is to find a job. What is more is that these discussions will make teenagers aware about how life-changing being convicted is, change it around a little bit, because individuals are capable of changing their behavior in prison. A shining example is in Guatemala, where ex convict not ex-convicted, you can say ex-convicts, are required to give speeches in different institutions to create awareness about the consequences when someone acts against the law, therefore young generations are worth committing crime. Okay. In sum, I maintain that if everybody considered it important 
for young for adolescents to be informed about the effects of committing crime from a person who all right we really have to fix some of this grammar i already tried to change some of it i want to keep your sentence as close to the original as possible but i still have to make some changes here katya okay so uh in sum if everybody considered it important for adolescents to be informed of the effects of committing a crime from a person who did one in real life, this could have a big impact in teenagers' S apostrophe lives because crime can be prevented. Okay. So, Katya, for me, um, I think you did a lot of things that were good. You, um, you were on topic. You answered the question in many ways. Um, although I do want to see a few things. I want to see more accurate grammar for sure. That's something that's very important. And then I also want to see maybe this all be a little more condensed. It was a lot of words. It was a lot of language. And um, it, you need to be more concise with what you're writing, okay? Um, I would like to see you on the online course. This way you could take advantage of learning everything, but also learning how to use our template. And that will really help you write really concisely and, and sentences that and paragraphs that get your meaning across without um, including extra um, non-essential information. So that's something I'd really like to see happen. I'd like to see you on the course. Um, so hopefully it's something you'll consider. I look forward to seeing you on the course and seeing more of your essays in the future. So best of luck to you.